is a statement, I am Angus Dalgleish for the Port Hedland Council special meeting. Thank you, Mayor and fellow councillors, for allowing me to address the special meeting. It's a privilege to speak on an issue of profound importance to the health and future of all Australians, an issue that concerns the safety of COVID-19 vaccines administered to millions. As unsettling as the un information I will present may be, it is critical that we confront it now to prepare for the potential public health consequences. There is long established science which I feel has been ignored willfully up to now. The concerns raised in the science summary seen in the letter of Mr. Russell Broadbent MP to the Australian Prime Minister, co-authored by me and several eminent international experts, many of whom I know well, are based on well-established science. This is not theoretical or speculative. Decades of research have demonstrated the risks of foreign DNA integrating into human cells, leading to potentially catastrophic outcomes. Synthetic DNA contamination, as detected in Australian vials of the Pfizer and Moderna COVID-19 vaccines by David Spiker, presents risks of a genomic instability which can manifest as cancers, immune disorders and hereditary diseases. To explain in more straightforward terms, the vaccines contain lipid nanoparticles which encapsulate synthetic DNA fragments. These nanoparticles deliver this DNA into various organs throughout the body where the DNA has the potential to integrate into our own genetic material. As such, these vaccines are not vaccines. They are, in fact, a gene therapy based. This genomic integration, as the scientific literature makes clear, can lead to cancer development, immune system disruption and more. The sheer levels of contamination detected, up to 145 times permissible, permissible limit in some cases, are extraordinary and far beyond what should be allowed in any medicinal product. The real world evidence from the UK, while this may sound like a remote possibility, I am here to tell you that we are already seeing evidence of these effects in real patients. In my work as an oncologist in the UK, I started to see a disturbing trend as early as February 2022. Patients who had been cancer-free for many years were suddenly relapsing with aggressive explosive cancers shortly after receiving booster doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. I personally counted six cases in as many weeks in patients who developed a rapid progression, having been completely stable with zero disease, having been on the immunotherapy I gave them five, eight, 10, 15, 18 years ago. I am used to people who uh, progress when they develop severe depression, such as during uh, divorce, bereavement, debt, etc. But all these patients only had one thing in common, and that was they'd all been forced to have a booster by, the patient, by their GPs on the grounds they were at risk. One of the most unsettling aspects in the nature of these cancers is that they're not slow progressing, that we are accustomed to managing, that they are aggressive, often presenting in advanced stages, affecting multiple organs by the time they're diagnosed. Colorectal cancer in particular is showing explosive growth, something we've never seen before. These cancers are emerging faster and more virulent than we would have expected in patients who have otherwise been stable. In addition to cancer relapses, I've encountered a rise in blood cancers such as leukemias and lymphomas, which have appeared shortly after vaccinations. I have had many colleagues and patients express concerns about the timing of these cancers following what I believe to be totally unnecessary boosters. It is not an isolated issue. My own research has shown that the boosters suppress the T cell response and switch the antibody response to tolerizing. That means this is the perfect example where you have switched off the policing of foreign uh, invaders, viruses, etc., and cancer, allowing it to grow uncontrolled. 
what does this mean for Australia? Australia has administered more than 63 million doses of these vaccines to over 20 million people. The same vaccines that are linked to these rising cancer cases are in use here. However, the difference is that Australia health authorities, particularly the Department of Health and the Therapeutic Goods Administration, have chosen not to monitor new or emerging cancer trends following the widespread use of these vaccines. This is a critical gap in the public health oversight. Given the contamination levels in the Australian virus significantly higher than acceptable limits, we must expect a similar rise in cancers and other genetic disorders here. This issue is not simply one of vaccine side effects. It is a potential long-term health crisis waiting to happen. It is troubling that the Department of Health has not made data on cancer trends post-vaccination publicly available. In the last month or so, we have had data released from the uh, Office of National Statistics of Japan, followed rapidly by Czechoslovakia and Northern Italy, which have clearly shown that each booster increases the incidence of cancer across the board. So the more boosters, the greater the likely of the cancer. And in these countries, they are already seeing a rise in all cancers across the board, not just those that we know are very sensitive to immune control. Stop. I, for the first time, I'm starting to see these in the last few months in the UK, where people have had more than one booster, particularly gliomas and pancreatic cancers in, in uh, instances that I ha have never seen the low background of these patients, of these cancers has suddenly accelerated into younger people and more aggressive disease, exactly as feared. I therefore urge the council to take this matter seriously and to advocate for immediate public health responses. We need our health authorities to begin monitoring these trends, develop testing protocols for those exposed to synthetic DNA, contamination and prepare treatment pathways for the inevitable rise in vaccine-induced conditions. Without immediate action, we risk leaving Australians vulnerable to a wave of preventable diseases that will dwarf anything that we have ever had to deal with in my lifetime. The contamination of these vaccines with synthetic DNA should have been caught and dealt with before any doses were administered. However, now that it's come to light, we must act urgently to mitigate the damage. The first step is to halt further distribution of these contaminated products and to ensure that all future vaccines meet the strictest safety council. In addition, I would point out, as someone who sat on the scientific board of CureVac, which calls itself the messenger RNA vaccine company for over five years and who left seven years ago, that unlike most clinicians, I understand the details and problems of these vaccines better than any clinical peer I have come across. They have been totally unable to stabilize these vaccines for years and cannot even meet the standards for cancer therapy. So how come they have been allowed to be rushed through for a disease which was not really a pandemic in the fact that it only killed 0.085% of the population with an average age of 82. These products are highly dangerous and the governments are being pushed by these pharmaceutical companies to use this technology for childhood vaccines. This could be an unmitigated disaster that would make the thalidomide disaster uh, previously look very, very small beer in comparison. Thank you again for the opportunity to address this council. I know the information I present is deeply unsettling, but it's vital that we face this contamination with hope and eyes. Even if we have been affected, we have to do this for the sake of our children and their grandchildren. The potential consequences, the damage we could be doing to our offspring. It's really far too significant to ignore. And I already feel a dreadful guilt that we have not stopped this previously. By addressing this now, we can work to protect the people of Australia 
and hopefully prevent a public health crisis of unprecedented proportions. Thank you for listening to me.